Hey guys, uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm going to read a little bit out of, uh, I'm going to finish reading out of First John, um, and then skip back to James, the book of James, uh, um, chapter 3. Uh, so yeah, First John chapter 5, um, verse 13, where we left off. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. So John is writing these things so you know that you have eternal life in Jesus Christ. This is a confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So you got to ask him in accordance to his will, not for your own selfish desires. He, he wants his kingdom to come on this earth, that we would love one another. Amen. He would be given glory. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give him life. I, re I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps them safe. And that's, that's one in uh, capital letters, so that's Jesus. The one who is born of God keeps them safe. An evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. So this, this whole world... Once you're saved, you realize it's under the control of the evil one, Satan. I mean, I was lost. I didn't know where I was going. My eyes were... I was ignorant. I was blind. Now I, now I see. Everything makes sense in light of this gospel. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. He wants us to know Him, and He is true. He is faithful and true. And we are in Him who is true by being in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Are you doing that? Are you keeping yourself from idols? Alright, uh, James chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. So are you never at fault in what you say? If you, if you are hardly... If you're able to keep your tongue in check, I believe I believe James is saying here that these should be the teachers. Um, you know, if, if all you speak is to build up and encourage and to correct using the word of God, um, to get to know somebody. But if you're if you're talking just idly and and worse, then these guys should not be teachers. When we put bits in, into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. So tame your tongue. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. You cannot tame your tongue without the Holy Spirit. 
You have to be walking with him 24-7. Keeping your mind fixed on Christ above. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. Now, brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So if your mouth is, is speaking both praise and curses, I mean, examine yourself. Do you truly know Jesus? Have you turned from your sin and put all your trust in Him? Are you going to those in need and loving your neighbor? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. So, Deeds, uh, just you have to you have to demonstrate Christ in your life. I mean, how and a big part of your life is your occupation. Does your occupation give glory to God, or are you promoting a one-world economy? I mean, are you a are you a businessman who's who's making money off off stocks and more from around the world? When Jesus says, uh, work with your hands, lead a simple life. Uh, if you serve money, that is that is your God. And Judas betrayed Jesus for money. It really comes down to what you love. Do you love money or God? Are you willing to give to those in need to help a brother out? Or are you going to be stingy and, and hang on to that money? But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. So if you if you have selfish ambition, like have a career and build up a kingdom for yourself, this wisdom that the world teaches. Jesus says it's earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Demonic. Which are you? Are you of the world? Or are you or, and Satan? Or are you of the Father? Satan is the ruler, the prince of the air. And narrow is the way that leads to life. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder. And every evil practice. So where where you have guys just seeking after their own way, like trying to make a ton of money. I mean, there's disorder and complete evil, and nobody loves one another. I mean, this is this is common sense. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace, reap a harvest of righteousness. So are you, are you sowing in peace? Those that do, that even make peace with their enemies, they reap harvest of righteousness, not only in their own life, when the lives around them. Grace of the Lord Jesus be with you.